futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good weekend all. I Rapstein of Linen Associates with your weekend edition of your metal update. And this is for the weekend of September 28th, month end also, September 28th, 2018. And we're just after 2.30 p.m. Central uh, Daylight Time. Now remember, in this edition, when we do our Fridays, I start off with the monthly chart of gold. Then all the other charts I'm going to show you are going to be the weekly charts. The idea of the weekend edition, we get to see a bit of the bigger picture as to what the market's doing. I can tell you that it's been a strong week for the dollar index, which generally works against gold, and it did most of the time. Gold bounced today, but it's been under the 1180, 1190 zone actually recently. The euro currency has gotten hit very hard, but at the same time, base metals started moving back up, and this has gotten to be a very interesting time in them. So let's go to the monthly chart of gold and first get a picture here. We've came down three weeks ago, well, actually three months ago, challenged the lower Bollinger Band, and since that point in time, we haven't been able to get off of it. I realize we've had bounces in the market along the way on the daily or the weekly charts, but if you look at the monthly, it's just sort of laying on that number, unable to really get away from it. When we go to a weekly area chart of closes, you've gone, and this is just closes, you've gone from 1353.20 to 1161.40, and you're up about $30 overall from that. You got higher up here, but now you're slipping back into the downside momentum, and the market is staying under the 18 week moving average of closes. The importance of that 18 week is when the market is under that, it gives me downside bias. That's how I use that. So I looked for the bias. When we come to a weekly bar chart, you still haven't gone back and challenged that 1160 zone. That doesn't mean you're not going to. One of the things that we're noticing is Venezuela suddenly has got a few more dollars. I wonder if they've been selling gold on this rally to get that money. We'll find out. But in any case, We've had a market that's had a bit of a bounce. The problem on the bounce is you still have now a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. That is bearish. When I come over and look at all the moving averages, you're under the 18-week average, which went now under the 200-week. There's nothing bullish about that. That's still a bearish crossover in the chart, so I see more resistance at those numbers if you were to rally back up. In terms of Bollinger Bands, for those of you that don't know what Bollinger Bands are, it's an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within them 95% of the time. Often what they'll offer you is an area where the market might find support. This doesn't mean it can't ride it, but notice it's staying glued to it. And that's a sign of bearishness. Now, when the market comes away from that, that is just a sign that the market is consolidating again. It's the question is, which way does it break out of the consolidation? We have momentum bounced to the upside. The bias is down. Momentum is not pointing up. It's just staying here sort of flat. Momentum is not picking prices up. The bias is down. The trend is down on the weekly charts. The gold-silver ratio is coming to an important number. If you look at what happened back here in July, basically, the market got over the 18-week average and stayed there. We're getting our first serious potential of challenging that number back here at the 8015 level. We closed at 8114 and you'll notice when we take a look at the charts, the silver charts had a little bit of a, a good week, if you will. It was down for the week a bit. Well, I'm sorry, this is GLD. I'll come to the silver in a minute. I don't know why I had that out of uh, sync there and that, that is out of sync. GLD, like the gold futures, lower highs, lower lows, Momentum, not turning up, bias down, still bearish. GDX, lower highs, lower lows, still hasn't turned its momentum up, the bias down. Here's the silver, I thought this was gonna be there. And what I was saying about silver, or trying to, is you'll notice silver's had a good weekly gain up 40 cents. So the market's gotten a hold of itself, if you will. 
I wrote in my newsletter this week that I'm beginning to wonder if we get that move back under, is that a sign that we're getting a watershed moment in base metals? Silver is one of these funny markets. Some people think it's a precious metal. I really don't. I think silver is an industrial metal, and it's that, that, that's how I'm going to view it. As such, the question is, what's its use? Is it being used more? Our economy's growing. Momentum, as you can see, I need another this week to know, but it might be turning up. So we have the bias down, a sign the market has run out of this down leg that really began up here in the uh, 1750 area, would be getting over 1495. That would break the pattern of lower highs, lower lows, and we're certainly are leaving that area of the Bollinger Band, but it's not out of the woods on the longer term chart. The copper market has come back to a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Now, if you look at the momentum right here, it turned up there. That's what I'd like to see out of silver, something like that. And as it did so, the resistance showed itself at 284.75 to 284.80. We got to 283.65 on a close, and then we went up again and ch uh, we're challenging that. That's why I'm starting to wonder, are these metals trying to tell us a story? We're not out of the woods, but you certainly aren't in the bear camp that you were before. In the platinum market, you went up a week ago, and again this week, you're challenging two weeks in a row, the 18-week average. I view the 18-week average, the red line, is the line in the sand. It's where markets, when they're down hard, often they'll come back to it. When they're up a lot, it's not uncommon. They'll come to it and fight its battle to see what the next trend is going to be. And that's what I think you have going on there. The strongest of the metals, and if you watch my daily videos, I've been a broken record, is saying the palladium. It's been on a tear to the upside. This is a market that's gone from 845. Right now it's up to 1065.70. It's still got momentum pointing up. It hasn't given you a break to come in. If you look, this is a weekly chart. You haven't had a lower week since all the way back here. Uh, it, in fact, that week, what was that low of that week? This was the week of, right through here, August 17th. So all of, most of August of that, it's almost two months. Pretty important. Is the market ahead of itself? Yes. Why? Because you're over the upper Bollinger Band, and markets only spend 5% of the time there. I think the pros are taking some money off the table up here. In the dollar index, look at the battleground. It's your 18-week moving average. You tried a downside breakout, you made a challenge of the lower Bollinger Band, came right back to that 18-day average. The dollar is trying to figure out now, did it bottom there or is this going to be the resistance area that it fails from again? And that will, of course, impact the market in a big way. I want to talk to you about my charting course. Don't go away because my course normally runs $129.95. If you type in the code SAVE40, no hyphens or anything in between it, just save 40, the course drops down by $40. So what you get, and there's quite a bit in it, we're talking it's a video course. So you're able to go online and work with this course and you see what I do, you do the same thing. And you see all these things I'm talking about? There's even more than that. You're gonna learn the swing lines, how to do them by hand and then let the study do it. If you can do it by hand, you understand it. The concept of the moving averages and which ones I use, because there's more that I use that I'm showing in these videos. The momentum, slow stochastics, how to plot and use your Bollinger Bands, my theories behind what they do. And of course, a study you don't see at all in my videos for YouTube and the like are window envelopes. You put it all together, you get a chart like this, and morning access to my video. Every morning, Monday through Friday, when I'm in the office, and that's most of the time, I'm recording a video and I'm giving you the ideas for that day's trade, setting you up with what I'm seeing, how the charts are looking, where you're going. Then I back that up twice a day with written updates and audios that go out as well. You can get this by either calling my staff to work with you. You can go to our website under the word education. You'll see that. You can click up here to get that. And this is a limited time offer. So come the end of this week, I'm probably going to take it off. Save 40. Got that? I'm I. Repstein. You have a great weekend.